Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and another not so weekly weekly news for another not so week. And what have I got this week? Well, actually, quite a good a range of stuff actually. Um, first of all, you remember I, well, I'll just put that down for a minute. You remember I looked at the Walkera QRX 350 and I wasn't really impressed. You know, I got the little ladybirds, the FPV ladybird I bought myself even. Brilliant, lovely, love them to bits, you know, and lots of people I've given them a fly, you know, introduced them into multi rotors They love them too because they're almost indestructible, although I did break mine yesterday. Um, Brilliant little multi-rotor. So I bought the QRX 350 thinking, woo, this will be good, you know, a real challenge to the DJI Phantom and, and the Blade and others. And really, it was a bit of a disappointment, as you saw in the review. And I haven't even bothered to do part two of that review yet, or, you know, the flight tests, because it doesn't fly very well. So <laughs> it was certainly with the original software, didn't fly very well at all. I've upgraded the software, and I've reflashed mine, and it, it flies better, but, you know, it's wasn't a match for the DJI, it wasn't a match for the Blade, so... Mm. But, obviously, Walkera saw that review, and they think they can do better. So, they have sent me this. It's the QRX 350. Where is it? QRX... Oh, wrong side. <laughs> it's the QRX 350 Pro. See that? Pro. Pro. So this is the, like the version 2, it's the enhanced version. Apparently it's got a whole lot of new features, a whole lot of more capability, and hopefully it's built a whole lot better. What does it say? It's got a high capacity battery that makes for a long flight time. It's a 5200 milliampere hour battery, but it's only 10C, and they claim up to 25 minutes. That's a pretty bold claim because the last one, the QRX 350, was only really good for about 5 or 6 minutes. So how have they managed to increase that by a factor of 4 or 5? I don't know, that battery alone, I don't think that would do it. So we'll try it out and see, of course it's up to 25 minutes, so I'm expecting less than that. I imagine if you had nothing in the whole thing except the battery and the multi-rotor, you'd get maybe close to 25 minutes. But of course, it also comes with this gimbal, where you can get this gimbal here. This is articulated, you know, um, pan tilt gimbal there, which looks quite nice, and that's going to add extra weight. And then it's also got FPV add on the center, the FPV, but that's extra weight too, and extra current drain. So, um, I'm not expecting 25 minutes out of it, to be totally honest, I really don't expect 25 minutes. If it does, I'll be really chuffed to bits, that'll be great. Hopefully they've refined the software a bit more so it doesn't bounce around like a whirling dervish when it's landing. Um, we'll see, we'll give it a test, we'll try and find out. So yeah, looking forward to reviewing this and doing the comparison. They also sent me one of these, as if I don't have enough Walkera transmitters already. Um, the Dimension F4, and what makes this so special? Well, um, I've got one here somewhere. Oh, here it is, look. Just happened to be on the bench. Um, here it is. The Dimension um, 4. Try and get the lights. It's shiny. You see shiny? We love, we love shiny here. Um, and it's got one of these. Bing! Just like the little Spy Hawk or whatever it was. It's got the little built-in LCD screen so you can fly without goggles. Ooh, it's got a plug for plugging your goggles in. Oh, don't see one. Oh, yeah, what's over here? No, don't know. Hopefully you can plug goggles into it as well, I don't know. But anyway, it's got the little screen, so you can fly it like this, so you never need to be beyond visual line of sight, because apparently they don't have much range anyway, this particular model, so you wouldn't want to fly too far away. But there you go, so I'm going to test this out. I've also got the, uh, the new Dimension 10 transmitter, so that makes four Dimensions I've got now, four Walkera transmitters. Um, so we'll test them all out, try it out, see how it goes, and we'll just do that comparison, because I think that's really important, because maybe they've nailed it with the version 2 product. Maybe it's a really cool piece of kit, if it is, I'll tell you. If it's crap, I'll tell you too. You know what it's like. What else have I got around here? Oh yeah, where is it? Here it is. Ooh, this is exciting. I'm looking forward to this one. Look. Can you guess what it is? Is it a car? Is it a tank? Well, it is a tank. It's a cine tank, but it is actually a quadcopter. It's a um, cine tank quadcopter made in America. Not much stuff made in America these days in the model arena, but this is made in America. Brilliant. And it's... Um, it's a quad, but it's got some really good ideas, I think. I haven't actually looked too closely at it yet, but from what I gather, they've got a two-part chassis. So one part has your motors, your flight control, and lots of rubbish sitting on it. And the other part has your battery and your camera with vibration isolation mounting. Why would you do it like that? Well, simple. When you normally mount a camera with a vibration isolation mount, you're relying on the mass of the camera to, to not move when the rest moves. So you need a mass there to, so basically to inertia to stop the camera moving around with the frame. So what they've done, clever little people, I think, I haven't I checked, I'm pretty sure they've done this, they put the camera mount on the part of the frame, the subframe, which has the battery. So the mass of your battery is also helping to dampen your vibration. Now I've seen video on YouTube, and I'll put a link to that video in the description of this one, um, of video taken from these things, and it looks damn good. No jello at all, not a sign of it. So if you're having trouble with jello in your multi-rotors, 
then hey, the Cine Tank might be a good solution. And I'm going to put it together. They're doing up a build video right now, so I'm going to assemble it in conjunction with the build video because, to be honest, at this stage, the instructions are nothing more than an exploded view, really, which is not very helpful. Although, hey, it makes it like a jigsaw, you know, more fun to build, I suppose, if you're inclined. But yeah, that's coming up, that multi rotor. So let's get multi rotor city around here. There's too many of them. And uh, also this week I've been working on another project which will make you all very happy, you know, working on the diversity controller videos, they're nearly done, but the problem with the diversity controller, the RC model reviews diversity controller I've already designed, is that it requires a printed circuit board and it requires a pre-programmed microcontroller or a microcontroller programmer, and a lot of people don't have these things of course, and I was going to, well I am going to get some boards printed up and then just flick them off at cost or enable you to go to the board house and buy them directly because I don't want to, I'm not making any money out of this but I thought in the meantime well hey why not why don't I do something really simple because everyone's crying out we want diversity and I'm thinking I can do something even simpler than the one I've built the one I've built there with the microcontroller is I don't know it's got about 20 parts on it I suppose that's not a lot but how about I, if I told you you could build one with six parts six components well you can and I've just finished the first video on that particular diversity controller showing you how it works, showing you how I breadboarded it up and then demonstrating it working and now I'm just going to do the second part which has how to build it and you build it dead bug style. And what's dead bug style? Well you don't need a circuit board, you just put the components down and you just solder them together. There's only six components, you know it's not exactly rocket science so I'm going to do that video up and for about four dollars worth of parts and a little bit of time you'll be able to build your own two channel diversity controller that will work with just about any kind of receiver, uh, video receiver you've got. So it's going to be worth a try, worth a crack, what's to lose? So stay tuned for that, it's coming up very soon. Just got to finish that video and a bit of editing, woohoo, where you go. I may do two parts because it will be pretty long otherwise. And I hate really long videos on YouTube, you know. It's much easier if you get little parts and then if you watch the first part and think that's crap, you don't bother watching the second part. Simple. So hopefully you'll like those videos. Now anything else on my bench? No. That's about it. I think I'm still waiting for my new microphone to come. So if this sounds grotty, blame the old microphone. Um, and I'm still waiting for my damn exemption because obviously I want to test fly that uh, new Walkera down there. Um, still waiting for my damn exemption. Now it's been six, seven, eight weeks, seven weeks or something like that since it was first mooted and I haven't got it yet. And that's really ticking me off because the summer's nearly, well the summer's shot, right? We're well into water, autumn now. We've got a tropical cyclone coming down this weekend and the forecast after that is for rain. As far as the eye can see, so oh, I'm really peed off. I've lost, you know, if I hadn't in good faith relied on this exemption being granted, I would have been miles ahead on my sense and avoid system now because I'd have been doing the testing on the ground. But in good faith, I've waited and waited and waited, and nothing's happened. So I'm now six weeks behind in my sense and avoid testing. It's, just, it's almost like people just don't care about aviation safety, isn't it? Like, oh, we don't want people to be safe in the air. No, bugger them. So I'm really angry, angry, frustrated about that. Hopefully th things will change soon, but if they don't, what do you do? I don't know, I have to think long and hard about that. Anyway, so there you go, as soon as I get my exemption, all these flying videos will come through. If I don't get my exemption, well then, all hell will probably break loose, because I'll be so pissed off. Anyway, thank you for watching, and allowing me to vent a little. And if you've got comments, stick them on the video, if you like it, thumbs up, you know, tell a friend. And now it's time for me to get back to the bench. And people have asked me, what the hell's a bench? Well, um, I thought I'd call it a bench, but apparently people tell me it sounds like bench. So I figured, hey, go with the flow. It's time to get back to the bench.